These are two of the greatest Porsche 911s of all time. Separated by three decades, but sharing the same core DNA, both are powered by rear-mounted atmospheric flat six engine that provides drive to the rear wheels and the rear wheels only. Both emanate from the same gene pool within Porsche's legendary GT department, and both share the same total clarity of purpose. To provide whoever's lucky enough to climb behind their respective steering wheels with the biggest thrills available this side of a full-blown racing car. But which of these 911 RSs hits the spot hardest in 2024? Is it the latest 992 GT3 RS boasting an eye-watering cocktail of power, downforce, speed and technical sophistication? Or is it the original 993 RS from 1995? A simpler kind of car from a different kind of era, but still a car with enough charm and pure pace to be an absolute scream, even today. As they say, let's begin to find out. So surely the latest is also the greatest. It has to be, doesn't it? It must be. It's got 500 and God knows what horsepower. Eight, 518 horsepower, I think, from a fundamentally unchanged engine from a GT3 but it does rev a bit higher at the top. All sorts of crazy aerodynamic stuff, all sorts of, frankly, just mind-bogglingly brilliant stuff going on with the dampers and uh, the diff. I'll show you all that stuff in a bit, but surely then this latest car is the greatest at the same time. They are one of the same thing, the latest is greatest. I don't know, I'm not sure. I've just had a go in the 993 RS and it is such a lovely car, it really is. But the big surprises are not necessarily the ones you'd expect when you get into the GT3 RS after the 993 RS. The first of which is how comfortable this thing feels compared with the old timer. The ride, I've got it in sport mode at the moment. You've got sport, normal and track. So I've got it in sport and the ride is so much better on this road, so much more comfortable, so much more refined, so much more sophisticated. And I guess that's because the suspension is that much more technically capable than the old timers suspension. But that's not really what you buy a car like this for, is it? You buy one of these things to engage track mode, to stick it in manual, to do that with a beautifully mechanical feeling, expensive, just brilliant paddle shift, rather than going like that with the 993's manual gear lever. And then you open up the taps. And that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand stiff. It's totally crackers what that feels like in this car on the public road. But the thing is, once you've done it a few times, yeah, it's addictive and you want to do it again and again and again, but once you've done it quite a few times, there's something about going nuts in the GT3 RS that starts to leave you a little bit cold. I start to crave the old car after a, after a while in this thing. It's absolutely magnificent, the engine in this car. It's only got another 200 cc's of capacity compared with the 993 RS, but it feels like it's about six times the size just the pure level of thrust that you get from it and the instant snap of throttle response and the response from the gearbox. Watch this. I'm in fifth gear. I'm going to hit the brakes. Not really hard, but fairly hard. Watch this. Into first gear. That simply. Fifth to first, like that. Incredible. Incredible. 
I'd love to sit here and say, mm, the steering of the old car is nicer than the steering of this car, but I'm not sure it is. The steering of the GT3 RS is absolutely incredible. It's so detailed in the response and feedback it gives to your hands. I really love the way this car steers. Okay, I don't think it's just as pure. I don't think you know just as much about what's going on underneath. The front tires in this, compared with how you feel in, in the 993 RS, but it steers really nice in this car. And it stops just bonk as well. It's flaming rude how fast and well this car stops and sounds. I mean, everything it does on the move, you, there's, there's nothing that you can complain about. Nothing, I don't think. Even the ride, I'm gobsmacked at how good it is. So let's talk about the dampers. So you have to be, the irony with the GT3 RS is that you have to be in track mode in order to activate and use the adjustable dampers. And when you put it in track mode, you lose the traction control and the ESP, ESC, whatever they call it, the stability control system. So you, on the one hand, you have to put it in its lariest setting, but on the other, you can then, once you're in track mode, now, then you can press the button and then you can start changing the bump and rebound characteristics of the dampers, front and rear, through eight settings. How cool is that? I think I'd like a little bit more compression damping. Dink, there you go, I've got some now. I'd like a bit more, dink, dink. And you can actually feel the car getting stiffer. Quite, you can probably see it on the camera. Just amazing, but you can only go to minus four on the dampers, as I say, when you're in track. As soon as you put it in sport or normal, dunk, you, you don't have access to the dampers. Or the diff, you have two different diff settings. You, you can change the severity of the locking up of the diff um, under load and then when you're coasting so when you're kind of trailing into a corner two different characteristics so basically on throttle and off throttle and again you need to be in track mode only to be able to do that with the steering wheel buttons here but that is so cool it's, it sounds like a gimmick but I tell you it works it makes a difference you watch these numbers change in the dashboard here for the compression and the rebound damping and the car feels different beneath your backside, beneath your hands. They're not mucking about with this stuff. Of course it's on a track where you need to get the most benefit out of, out of the damping system, but on the road you just use it as a comfort device. So there's another thing as well, you probably noticed it, it's quite large and it's attached to the back of the car, it's called the rear wing. There's another button on the steering wheel here that says DRS, drag reduction system. Again, you can only activate it in track mode and just how relevant it is on the road to be able to take away a bit of the 860 odd kilograms of downforce in order to be able to go faster down a straight on the public road. No, absolutely no relevance whatsoever. But on a track, well, I've, tri I've driven it around Silverstone, I've driven it around Dunsfold, two different tracks. And all I, all I can say is you have to trust me, it works, it makes a difference. The aerodynamic grip this thing has got is potty mad for a road car. The GT3 RS has four wheel steering, eight way adjustable dampers and diff, a dual clutch gearbox, multi adjustable traction control, even a DRS button to reduce its drag in a straight line. It is a technical tour de force. Yet on the move, it still feels sufficiently analogue to not feel like a mobile laboratory. Where it counts behind the wheel, it still feels like a true and sincere RS. Albeit one from a very different time beside the original 993. It is just amazing. The moment you get into this 993 RS, it just feels so simple and less complicated and more compact and just instantly easier to understand and quite frankly fall in love with straight away. I remember so much about this car when it was brand new and it absolutely blew my mind and 
anyone else's mind in the business at the time who was remotely into cars, it was a really quite seriously full-on piece of kit, the 993 RS, back in 1995, with 300 horsepower, a 911 with 300 horsepower and no turbochargers attached to it, felt like a pretty major event back in the day, but it was, so it was quick, and it, do you know, it still feels quick now, third gear, lots of noise, lots of torque, it's all about the top end in this car, but the mid-range torque is strong, even after that thing even after that monster, because that monster doesn't actually have that much torque. The GT3 RS is all about what happens from about 5,000 upwards, and yeah, it is totally epic what happens in that car. But this thing is much more gutsy. It's strong from three. It's really good from four and a half to five. And over the last 2,000, it's, it's, I'm not gonna thrash this thing, because this is a private car. I'm finding it slightly difficult not to though. But this thing is always all about the suspension, the chassis, the steering, the brakes, the way it goes around corners. Not necessarily the way it rides. The way it rides is pretty bad. It, although, actually, I'm quite pleasantly surprised. It's not as tragically uncomfortable as I thought it was going to be, or as I remember it being. What I love is the driving position. It always was delightful in a 993. Hinged pedals, gear lever, absolutely right there where you want it to be. Really nicely weighted accelerator and clutch and brake pedal. All the pedals just feel like they're from the same family and you have to put the same amount of effort into them, whether that's the clutch or the brakes or the accelerator to just to give it a, a blip up. The way it blips is just, it's just astonishing. It's lovely. Everything about this car is really lovely. <clears throat> anyway, I'm getting carried away with myself. The driving position. It's just perfect. Super simple. Nice big rev counter right in front of you. Speedometer over there. Don't really need that. All the kind of ancillaries about fuel and oil and all the stuff that you need and absolutely nothing more. Unlike the big fella, which has got so many dials, so many buttons, so many sub-menus in it. You need a degree just to, just to make it move. This thing is the polar opposite of that. It's a lesson in simplicity. It's a lesson in pairing stuff back to the point at which you just have everything that you want and nothing more. But the main thing about the 993 RS is the way it drives. The steering is just delicious you can feel every grain of tarmac beneath the front tires through this steering wheel which has not a single button on it it's got the horn on it and that's it and I love that for it it just feels so re refreshing to not have any buttons on the steering wheel so I've just put my foot down now in fifth at four well, I'm not going to say how many revs it's strong, it goes, properly goes. It doesn't feel like a vintage car, it just feels like a fast car. Simple as that. The gearbox is just beautiful. The, the synchronization and cohesiveness between the gear lever, the clutch, and one's brain during downshifts like that. It just feels so natural. I totally love this car. I love the way it looks. I love the way it sounds. I'm gobsmacked by the way it goes. It's probably fast. I love the new GC3 RS. I love it to bits. I think it's an insane spaceship of a car and you just have to kind of stand open jawed and admire what Porsche's done with that car, all the tech on it, but They've missed a the trick by moving on and away from cars like this. And in a way, I think they should move back towards the way cars like this are. Make them lighter, make them simpler. Make them just easier to interact with. Less baffling, less bamboozling. More lovely and more fun, more engaging. Despite its age, 
the 993 does not feel antiquated or in any way slow, even beside the mighty 992 RS. Its six-speed manual gearbox is a total delight. Its ride is firm, but its body control is still way sharper than you'd think. And on a road like this, it's still quick enough to be a serious weapon, even if it can't ultimately live with the speed or sophistication of the 992. Okay then, let's look at it logically. Let's address the two of them logically. Don't worry, this won't take a while because it has no, there's no relevance to it. The GT3 RS is miles faster, stops better, changes gear better, um, has more grip mechanically and aerodynamically, makes a better noise. That's, that's the first of the thing on the list that actually has some significance and relevance. Makes a better noise than the, than the 993 RS. Um, but it feels bigger on the road, it feels heavier on the road. Um, it's not more expensive, okay? That's another factor in its favour, amazingly. The 993 RS is insured for 300 grand. This car, as tested, with all various bits on it, is 235 grand. But in the real world, these things are already changing hands for 350, 400, God knows what in the future. Numbers wise, well, they say they're not going to restrict the numbers of the GT3 RS. They're merely going to make them for a certain amount of time and then that's it. And at that point, we'll all know how many GT3 RSs Porsche has actually made, but that point is a way off yet. For the 993 RS, that point is, it's about 1100 cars. There's a bit of debate actually online whether it's 1104 or 1014, but basically it's just over a thousand cars. Which means the 993 RS is in short for 300 grand and is worth every penny. So which RS do we prefer? Well, as ever, it's complicated and it depends. On a track, the latest car is inevitably the one you'd go for. It has more grip, more performance, more of everything and is an utterly incredible car to drive fast as a result. But pretty much everywhere else, the 993 RS is a hard car not to fall completely head over heels in love with. Plus, it's quicker and more capable than you might think, even in 2024, and even beside a monster like the 992 GT3 RS. So despite the mind-altering brilliance of the latest example, the 993 RS is, in our opinion, the greatest RS. Amen to that. Thanks for watching this vid. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please do give it a thumbs up and maybe hit subscribe.